Prologue. Now you see no Jesus Christ comes from without in anybody's visions. No Rama, no Krishna, no Buddha, and no Baba Fakir comes from without to anybody. The visions are only because of the impressions and suggestions that a disciple has already accepted in his mind. These impressions and suggestions appear to him like a dream. No body comes from without. This is the plain truth. One, visions are only because of the impressions and suggestions that a disciple has already accepted in his mind. These impressions and suggestions appear before him like a dream. Two, so whatever you have to gain, it is all with this faith and belief that your ideal is perfect. Whatever you gain, you gain it as per your own faith and belief. As a child gets motherly love from his mother, similarly the husband gets a wife's love from the same lady. Three. Once I was going, and Lord Krishna was going ahead of me. There was some cow dung lying on the ground. That image of Lord Krishna asked me to eat that cow dung. I took a morsel of cow dung and ate it. When I reached home, I thought that in no religious book is it written that an image of Lord Krishna or Rama has ever directed any disciple to eat cow dung. So I thought that it was not the real Krishna who had asked me to eat the cow dung. 4. It's either the faith that works or fate. My guru, Maharaj, someone called him uncle. Another thought of him as editor. Someone thought of him a beggar. I considered him something else. Whatever I considered him to be, I received from him in that capacity. Whatever others thought of him, they received in that capacity. Do you follow what I am saying? 5. Because I was searching for my final abode or source, I leave the mind. When I go within and meditate, I leave the shapes, forms and colors. There is no form of the guru, no shape, nothing else. 6. Only light and sound remain. 7. The entity that is inside me listens to the sound within and sees the light. That entity is something else entirely. The sound is something else. The light is something else. You listen to the sound within. You are separate from the sound. 8. You see sun or moon inside. See light within. Light is separate from the one witnessing the light. When I search for that entity or witness, I cease to exist. 9. This is our origin. What conclusion did I reach? 
When I found out that I do not manifest or appear within anybody, then I also leave the mind and all its appearances, then remains light and sound. 10. Every two or three months, or sometimes every three days, when I go and search for that entity that listens to the sound, then my being disappears. What remains? Nothing. 11. Now I think to myself, if I have become something by reaching that place, if I can do something, then I should be able to remove all the problems that the world is facing right now. If they could, the ancestors from the past would have removed their problems or difficulties. Baba Sawan Singh would have removed his troubles. Swamiji would have alleviated his disease. Kabir had kidney problems for 10 years in the old age. 12. So what did I understand? What is my realization of this supreme element, tattva? I am a bubble of the supermost consciousness. 13. In the process of evolution, I appeared or manifested. Similarly, you also appeared. I did not exist before, and I won't exist again. 14. Only one element will remain from which this bubble came into existence. That element is sound. Its name is Nam. That Nam is not the sound of bells or conch. It's not the sound of Veena. It is the principal sound, Sa Shabad. This is what the Bani of Saints mentions, Sa Shabad. 15. So after reaching this, what happened to me? What did I gain? I found peace. 16. Satsangis tell me that I go to help them in their dreams or while they're awake, but I have no knowledge of it. This opened my eyes to the reality. 17. What happened for me? The working of the mind the wheel of thoughts in which I was caught up in, thoughts that made me cry, scream, and experience dukkha, came to an end. Why? Because I understood this. Just as I do not manifest in the minds of others, similarly, whatever manifests within me is imaginary. 18. I don't want you to consider Fakir Chand a guru. The true guru is within you. 19. Everything is inside you. You are already whole and perfect. Only your faith is needed. Everything is within. 20. Where we have to go, there is no Satnam, no Nam, no Anami. Now, I think to myself, when my I ceases to exist there, what happens to me? Silence. It's a state where there is neither I nor you. In that state, there is no Ishwa, creator, no Paramishwa, God, or their thought. There is no mind, no chitta, intellect, no ahamka, ego. 21. In that place, there is no happiness or unhappiness, no truth or untruth, neither sin nor virtue. There is no day or night, no moon or sun. There is radiance without light. 22. Now at this age of 95 years, I live a life of peace and happiness. 
while knowing, I lead my life as if I know not. Epilogue. To his will I bow, to him alone I surrender. This is the last stage of my lifelong research. His will is supreme.